Antiplatelet drugs are a very important concept for the USMLE Step 1. Do you know their mechanism of action? Are you familiar with their important side effects? Let's take a look. Let's begin with a few important concepts regarding platelets. Platelets are formed from megakaryocytes and they have a lifespan of around 8 to 10 days. Platelets have two important storage granules, alpha granules and dense granules. Alpha granules are more numerous. They store fibrinogen, von Willebrand factor, and glycoprotein 2B3A. Dense granules release their contents when platelets are aggregated, and their contents aid in platelet aggregation. Dense granules store ADP, ATP, catecholamines, serotonin, and calcium. Glycoprotein 2B3A acts as a receptor for fibrinogen on the surface of platelets. Antiplatelet drugs are divided into four different classes, cyclooxygenase inhibitors, ADP inhibitors, glycoprotein 2B3A inhibitors, and phosphodiesterase inhibitors. Let's begin with cyclooxygenase inhibitors. This class includes aspirin and triflozil. Aspirin is an irreversible inhibitor of the enzyme COX-1 or prostaglandin 8 synthase. It inhibits the synthesis of thromboxane A2, thereby inhibits platelet aggregation. Common side effects of aspirin include nausea, heartburn, slightly increased risk of intracranial hemorrhage, and abdominal or epigastric pain. If you give enteric coated aspirin, the abdominal or GI side effects of aspirin can be decreased. However, since it is an irreversible inhibitor, the action of aspirin will last the whole lifespan of the platelet, which is 8 to 10 days. ADP inhibitors include clopidogrel or Plavix, Presugel, Ticagrelor, and Ticlopidine. Of these, clopidogrel and Presugel are prodrugs which need to be activated by cytochrome P450 system in the liver. They are given as adjuncts to aspirin in patients undergoing percutaneous coronary intervention or angioplasty with stent placement. Common side effects include diarrhea and skin rash with clopidogrel and presogel. Ticlopidine may cause neutropenia, thrombocytopenia, and TTP or thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. The next class of antiplatelet drugs is glycoprotein 2B3A inhibitors. They include abcizumab, tirofiban, and eptifibatide. Of these, abcizumab is a monoclonal antibody that binds to the glycoprotein 2B3A receptor, whereas tirofiban and eptifibatide, they mimic part of the structure of fibrinogen and compete with fibrinogen on binding to the glycoprotein 2B3A receptor. Side effects include thrombocytopenia. Glycoprotein 2B3A inhibitors are given in patients who are undergoing percutaneous coronary interventions like angioplasty with stent placement. The last class of antiplatelet drugs is phosphodiesterase inhibitors. These drugs in, uh, raise the CAMP levels within the platelets and include dipyridamol and silostazole. Silostazole is metabolized by cytochrome P450 enzyme system in the liver Hence, its dose needs to be decreased in patients who are concomitantly being treated with cytochrome P450 inhibitors like omeprazole. So let's recap the important points. There are four classes of antiplatelet drugs, cyclooxygenase inhibitors, ADP inhibitors, glycoprotein 2B3A inhibitors, and phosphodiesterase inhibitors. Aspirin is an irreversible inhibitor of the enzyme COX-1 or prostaglandin H synthase. Aspirin is given along with clopidogrel in patients undergoing percutaneous coronary interventions. The glycoprotein 2B3A inhibitors include abcizumab, eptifibatide, and tirofiban. Ticlopidine is associated with TTP or thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. Phosphodiesterase inhibitors raise intraplatelet CAMP levels. Thanks for watching. If you are looking for a great resource to solidify your USMLE knowledge, check out Achievable. Achievable USMLE is an online course with a comprehensive and searchable textbook, and it has thousands of quizzes which will help you build and test your knowledge. Link is in the description.